Okay, so once again, Mr. Pioro on Twitter was right about what we could potentially see for the release dates of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door and Luigi's Mansion 2. The Mario Day festivities were officially announced. We've got a brand new Mario Bros. movie coming in 2026. We've got deals that are out there for all Mario games, so make sure you guys check that out. I'll have a picture up so you guys can see some of them, so take advantage of those deals if you want Luigi's Mansion 3 or Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the five people who don't have that yet or any of the other Mario games on the Nintendo Switch. There are a batch of Mario games that are coming too very soon. Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, and Dr. Mario on the Game Boy Color. Those are all coming over on March 12th. So you guys can go pick those up. But the two big things here were the release dates, like I mentioned. So Luigi's Mansion 2 is going to be officially dropping on June 27th of 2024 that's a thursday and then we have paper mario the thousand year door which is officially dropping on may 23rd of 2024 once again a thursday now i point out thursday because this has kind of tied into many of the different things that we're going to talk about and the fact that nintendo has no confirmed games for the second half of 2024 and it's got people thinking something crazy or something big is happening then so we'll go over all of that and then i'll give you guys a little bit more information on what i think nintendo's plans are going to be and what we could see based off of previous information and a little bit more but before we get into any of that what's good everyone oj here welcome back to another video please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you are someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first and let's go ahead and jump right back into it here let's talk about paper mario the thousand year door luigi's mansion 2 a little bit both of these games are slated for the first half of this year but i want to focus in on a couple different things and that's the fact that these games are now dropping on thursday even if you talk about the new endless ocean game the luminous that game where you're out there like with dolphins fishing around and stuff so yeah that one's also so Thursday as well and we've got two games in May so Nintendo is stacking up two games in May the Endless Ocean game that is a brand new game many people thought that it'd be a remaster but it's actually a brand new game and then Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door is obviously a beloved GameCube RPG that's coming back Luigi's Mansion 2 is a beloved Nintendo 3DS well somewhat beloved Nintendo 3DS game but it sold really well on the Nintendo 3DS and it's coming over to Nintendo Switch I'm all for bringing back some of these old games that have never been re-released on previous Nintendo hardware. A lot of these systems don't have VCs for you to go out there and play them on official Nintendo hardware. So if they can bring them back, update them, make them look better, and bring back the features, and even add in new things, I think that is going to be positive for gamers out there. Now, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is very interesting because it comes at a time that many, many, many people feel that Nintendo is getting ready for the next thing. Now, we have Jeff Grubb out here stating that Nintendo has something potentially planned for Metroid in May. So it looks like May seems to be a target or a focus for Nintendo for a lot of content. So that's the reason why I wanted to point out the Endless Ocean game is coming out in May. They've got the new dates of Thursday for their releases. It used to be Friday. And then even before last generation with the Wii U, it was on Sundays, which was just terrible that they released the game on Sunday. You don't get the weekend to play the game if you have work and all of that. Nintendo's kind of crept up their release dates, but if you look at it with May, the fact that they are doing the two games in May and of course the Thursday release dates when it comes down to it, that does kind of lead, I think, a little bit to believe that Nintendo is going to be having something major in May. Now, in April, we don't have anything when it comes to first-party games in April. We've got Princess Peach Showtime coming out in March, which is going to be awesome. The demo's available. You guys can check it out. Pretty standard game. I don't think it's going to be anything mind-blowing, but from what I've played, it seems like it's going to be a fun little romp with a character that people have wanted to have a new game since the DS days with Super Princess Peach. So that's awesome, but nothing in April, so it seems like they're gathering something, right? That's that's the first month of the new fiscal year and then may they've got two games they could have spread that out further across the middle of the year and summer but they decided to stack it up then so we do have those rumors from jeff grubb about more metroid stuff happening in may so that could happen but even with april there has been rumors that nintendo will have a bigger or a nintendo direct right there'll be something nintendo direct related in april so that's going to be very interesting to see if nintendo actually has anything 
when it comes to presentation because they don't have any type of games coming out then so maybe there is a little bit more evidence or proof that nintendo will be having something then now that we know their first half lineup now the other thing that people are saying is that nintendo is clearing things out getting ready for the nintendo switch 2 which I think at this point, obviously, it's the worst kept secret. Nintendo does have their next generation system that's very close to completion or complete at this point or pretty much finalized what they're going to do. And now it's just a matter of getting ready, prepping, large scale logistics, finishing up the rest of the games. These are things that obviously you're going to have to take your time to make sure that get done if you want a successful launch. So the second half of the year is wide open. Now, if there is a Nintendo Direct in April, like some of the rumors say, or Nintendo Direct, that could give us more information on games coming out for the summer and for the fall. Or Nintendo could just not have anything then, and then maybe in June or sometime around then, they will have something else that will let us know about what's happening in the second half of the year. Now, I don't think that there's going to be any type of Nintendo Switch 2 announcements or anything in the first half of the year even though some people have rumored that there will be, but a lot of these rumors that are coming out, they're kind of just unsubstantiated and they're from people who miss things every now and then. I think so far when it comes to like what Jeff Grubb says, when it comes to what Nate the Hate says, when it comes to what Mr. Pioro says, especially Mr. Pioro, he's been like almost 100% right or pretty much 100% right. So people are gonna be waiting for that. But I do think that Nintendo will probably talk about the Nintendo Switch 2, the first, I would say, teaser video or something of it, probably in the fall. I think that the fall would be a good time. There's also rumors that Nintendo will have Metroid Prime 4 ready for the fall and Metroid Prime 2 and Metroid Prime 3 will release some point, I guess, throughout the year, probably second half of 2024 here or coming up. They could just say, hey, here's a game, right? They did that with the Endless Ocean out of nowhere. Here's a game and it's coming out in a few months. So I do think that it's very much possible that Nintendo has these games ready to go when it comes to the last batch of Nintendo Switch games. This could include The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, Wind Waker HD, Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Prime 3. That's four games right there that they can spread out throughout the rest of the year and probably ride out the Nintendo Switch when it comes to 2024. And if Metroid Prime 4 somehow makes it and is not a cross-gen game, at least initially is not a cross-gen game, then that would also be a pretty good end to the last year of the Nintendo Switch. Now, moving forward to what Nintendo's going to do, there are the rumors that Nintendo's going to be doing a 2025 launch for the Nintendo Switch 2. That's been corroborated by multiple different outlets there, which, once again, I do think that it's very much feasible, especially if you're trying to finish up everything. There are some people that are speculating that Nintendo's doing this because of piracy concerns, the stuff that happened with the whole Yuzu emulator and all of that. Not so sure if that's the case, but I do think that Nintendo is probably thinking very, very, very hard about what they're going to do with their piracy and what they're going to do with the security of their system. They cannot have another situation that they had with the Nintendo Switch, where pretty much on day one, hour one, it was hacked and people have those launch switches to be able to play pirated software, pirated games, all that stuff. So Nintendo needs to make sure that they figure that stuff out more so than anything. I think if you figure that out and you have a system out there that cannot be pirated so easily, I think things would be better and doesn't cause you as many headaches as they've had throughout this whole thing. Now, I'm all down for legal emulation and all of that, but obviously there's a lot of stuff that's not legal when it comes to people just stealing the games. So I think that needs to be shored up and they might be taking more time to make sure that that stuff doesn't happen, especially if Nintendo has uh, backwards compatibility, right? I do think that this new chip is not just an upgraded Switch like some people are are trying to say i do think that it's a full new system that's going to be able to retrofit the games when it comes to nintendo switch one compared to nintendo switch two i do think that it is going to be a custom new soc nvidia chip so it's not just the tegra x1 with more ram or beefed up or switched around a little bit it's something that's completely different now that they know that the system is going to be something that people are excited and interested about i think that nintendo's probably spending a bit more money when it comes to what the tech technical specs of this system is going to be so it's not just going to be a nintendo switch pro in my opinion and based off the information that nate the hay and other people have also stated as well especially if you believe the euro gamer stuff that they put out when it comes to it running the matrix demo and some of the impressive stuff that people have said now remember i'm not saying and nobody has said that it's going to be a playstation 5 or an xbox series 
specs or anything like that. What I am saying is that it's going to be far more advanced than what we got with the Nintendo Switch. It's going to be far more modern as well when it comes to custom mobile SoC. So we're going to get something that's newer, more advanced, sleeker, and better when it comes down to it. Because the Nintendo Switch, when it comes to the Tegra X1, that's 2015 tech. Even if they move forward to like 2021 or something like that, that would be a very big jump above what we saw because what Nvidia was using at that time was still one of the first of its kind when it comes to those super mobile chips and all of that. And now we've had several generations of chips afterwards that Nintendo can model a cost effective and efficient chip after for the Nintendo Switch 2. So I do feel that that will be done. But overall, it's very interesting to see exactly how everything's playing out here. I do think that Nintendo's Thursday release dates are, and this is kind of just my own personal thought process, are definitely something that they're trying to use to make sure that they can shorten the time span from when they ship out the game and when it gets to the retailers and to where the leaks can happen. Because aside from all this piracy stuff, they still have a major leak problem to where people, somebody, will get the game and put it out on the internet, right? A week or two weeks before the game comes out and that's something that needs to get addressed as well they need to kind of sure up those leaks to where people have the game and can spoil it well ahead of time and cause problems overall when it comes to people not wanting spoilers and all of that so i do think that that needs to be addressed and maybe these thursday dates are something that they're doing to address that it could be you move up that day by one maybe you ship it a little bit later spend a bit more it gets there quicker so people can't distribute it as fast i think that could be a thing as well but we don't know on that but i just think it's something that nintendo is prepping and getting ready as all of the games past the i think fiscal year of this year are going to be doing that because princess peach showtime that is a game that's still on friday so that is their last friday release from what i can tell and then from endless ocean and on it is going to be thursdays from there so i do think there's definitely something and it coincides with that fiscal year in terms of it starting and them probably wanting to get shorter time periods between when they put that game out there to when they ship that game out there and it gets into the stores on sale so less people can get the game and spoil it online so that's going to be interesting as well. But what do you guys think about all of this? I think it's very interesting overall when it comes to what Nintendo is going to be doing. But overall, it's an exciting time for Nintendo when it comes down to what they're doing next, some of the releases that are coming out, some of the stuff that's happening with Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door and more. I'm really looking forward to playing some of the games here and seeing what Nintendo's plans are going to be for the future. But all right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. Click that notification bell and check out my other Nintendo Switch and RPG videos right here on screen. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.